The reading from Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning. One day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and separated the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and there was evening and there was morning, a second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed each according to its kind upon the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your coming. Lift up your eyes round about, and see, they all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far, and your daughters shall be carried in their arms. Then you shall see and be radiant, your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, the wealth of nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister to you, and they shall come with acceptance on my altar. And I will glorify my glorious house. Who are these that fly like a cloud and like doves to their windows? For the coastland sh shall wait for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your sons from afar, their silver and gold with them, for the name of the Lord your God, and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. Foreigners shall build up your walls, and their king shall minister you. For in my wrath I smote you, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. Your gates shall be open continually, day and night they shall not be shut that men may bring to you the wealth of the nations with their kings led in procession. For the nation and the kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Those nations shall utterly be laid waste. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the plain, and the pine, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons of those who oppressed you shall come bending low to you, and all those who despised you shall bow down at your feet. They shall call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, with no one passing through, I will make you majestic forever, a joy from age to age. You shall suck the milk of nations, you shall suck the breast of kings, and you shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob.
The reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month they shall take every man a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then a man and his neighbor next to his house shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male a year old. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs in the evening. Then they shall take some of the blood, and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat them. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled with water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Pascha. The reading is from the prophecy of Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God, and they threw the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call to your God. Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we do not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation and whence do you come? What is your country and what of your people of what people are you of? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Take me up and throw me into the sea, then the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried to the Lord, We beseech thee, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not on us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of shale I cried, and thou didst hear my voice. For thou didst cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood was round about me. 
all thy waves and thy billows passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out from thy presence. How shall I again look upon thy holy temple? The waters closed in over me. The deep was around me. Weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet thou didst bring up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to thee into thy holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their true loyalty, but I with the voice of thanksgiving will sacrifice to thee. What I have vowed I will pay, deliverance belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he cried, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. Then tidings reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, and covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he made proclamation and published it through Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them cry mightily to God. Yea, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence which is in his hands. Who knows, God may yet repent and turn from his fierce anger so that we perish not. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God repented of the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry, and he prayed to the Lord and said, I pray thee, Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and repentest of evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take my life from me, I beseech thee, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Do you do well to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat to the east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade till he should see what would become of the city. And the Lord God appointed a plant and made it come up over Jonah that it might be a shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm which attacked the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God appointed a sultry east wind and the sun beat upon the of Jonah so that he was faint and he asked that he might die and said it is better for me to die than to live but God said to Jonah do you do well to be angry for the plant and he said I do well to be angry angry enough to die and the Lord said you pity the plant for which you did not labor nor did you make it grow which came into being in a night and perished in a night and should I, not punish, punish, should I not pity Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also much cattle? The reading is from Joshua. While the people of Israel were encamped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month, at evening in the plains of Jericho, and on the morrow after the Passover, on that very day they ate of the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain, and the manna ceased on the morrow when they ate of the produce of the land, and the people of Israel had manna no more, but ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. When Joshua was by Jericho, 
he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood before him with his drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord bid his servant? And the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Put off your shoes from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. The reading is from Joshua. The reading is from Exodus. And they moved on from Succoth and encamped at Dethan on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them in a day by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. They might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to turn back and encamp in front of Pihai between Migdal and the sea, in front of Baal Zavon, you shall encamp over against it by the sea. For Pharaoh will send, say to the people of Israel, They are entangled in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants was changed toward the people, and they said, What is this we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot, and took his army with him, and took six hundred picked chariots, and all the other chariots of Egypt, with the officers over all of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the people of Israel as they went, went forth defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and all chariots, and all his horsemen and his army, and overtook them, and camped by, at the sea by, by Pihahivro, in front of Baal Zephon. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they were in great fear. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, is it because there were no graves in Egypt? You have taken us away to die in the wilderness. What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is it not this? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to his people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he work for you today for the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again the Lord will fight for you and you have only to be still the Lord said to Moses why do you cry to me tell the people of Israel to go forward lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it that the people of Israel may go on dry ground through the sea and I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his short chariots, and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen, then the angel of God, who went before the host of Israel, moved and went be behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was a cloud and the darkness, and the night passed without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground. The waters began a wall to them on their right and on their left. Being up, the Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down upon the host of the Egyptians and 
discomfited the host of Egyptians, clogging their chariots' wheels, so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, and the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned <clears throat> to its wonted flow. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptian, Egyptians fled into it, and the Lord routed the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, the waters returned and covered their chariots and horsemen, and all the hosts of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not so much as one of them remained, but the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore, and Israel saw the great work which the Lord did against the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang the song to the Lord, and spoke, saying, Let us sing to the Lord. The rider, the horse and his rider, hath he has thrown into the sea. Let us sing unto the Lord. He was to me a helper and protector for salvation. Let us sing unto the Lord. This is my God, and I will glorify him, the God of my Father, and I will exalt him. Let us sing unto the Lord. The Lord bringing wars to naught, the Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea. Let us sing unto the Lord. And his chosen officers are sunk in the Red Sea. Let us sing unto the Lord. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Let us sing unto the Lord. Thy right hand, O Lord, has been glorified in power. Let us sing unto the Lord. Thy right hand, O Lord, has shattered the enemy. And in greatness of thy majesty, thou hast overthrown thy adversaries. Let us sing to the Lord. The Lord sends forth thy fury, consumes them like stubble, and by the spirit of thy displeasure the waters parted to sunder. Let us sing unto the Lord. The waters stood up like a wall, the deeps congealed in the hearts of the sea. Let us sing unto the Lord. The enemy said, I will pursue and I will overtake. I will divide the spoil, I will satisfy my soul. I will destroy with my sword. My hand shall have dominion. Let us sing unto the Lord. Thou didst send thy spirit, and the sea covered them. They sank us, sink as lead in the mount mighty waters. Let us sing unto the Lord. Who is like thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorified in holiness, marvelous in glory, doing wonders? Let us sing unto the Lord. Thou didst stretch out thy right hand, and the earth swallowed them. Thou hast led in thy wilderness the people whom thou hast redeemed. Let us sing unto the Lord. Now are the chiefs of Edom dismayed. The leaders of Moab trembling seize them. All the habitat, inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Let us sing unto the Lord. Let trembling and fear fall upon them. Because of greatness of thy arm, let them become a stone. Let us sing unto the Lord. Until thy people pass by, O Lord, until the people pass by whom thou hast purchased, let us sing unto the Lord. Thou will bring them in in and plant them on thy mountain, the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thy abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have made ready, let us sing unto the Lord. The Lord shall reign forever and ever, for when the horse of Pharaoh with the chariots and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought back the water of the sea upon them, let us sing unto the Lord. But the Lord, but the children of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea, let us sing unto the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let us sing unto the Lord. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, let us sing unto the Lord. For gloriously has he been glorified. The reading from the prophecy of Zephaniah. The 
Thus says the Lord, Therefore wait for me, says the Lord, for the day when I arise as a witness, for my decision is to gather nations, to assemble kingdoms, to pour out upon them my indignation, all the heat of my anger, for in the fire of my jealous wrath all the earth shall be consumed. Yea, at that time I will change the speech of the peoples to a pure speech, that all of them may call on the name of the Lord and serve him with one accord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia my suppliants, the daughter of my dispersed ones, shall bring my offering. On that day you shall not be put to shame because of the deeds by which you have rebelled against me. For then I will remove from your midst your proudly exultant ones, and you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain. For I will leave in the midst of you a people humble and lowly. They shall seek refuge in the name of the Lord, those who are left in Israel. They shall do no wrong and utter no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouth a deceitful tongue. For they shall pasture and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cast out all your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. You shall fear evil no more. The reading from the third book of Kings. Let us attend. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow there was gathering sticks. And he called to her, and he said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her, and he said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar, and a little oil in a cruise. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat and die. And Elijah said to her, Fear not, go and do as you have said. But first make me a little cake of it, and bring it to me, and afterward make it for yourself and for your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of meal shall not be spent, and the cruise of oil shall not fail, until the day of the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said, and she and he and her and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not spent, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. After this the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, came ill, and his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in them. And she said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and cause the death of my son. And he said to her, Give me your son. And he took him from her bosom and carried him up into the upper chamber where he lodged and laid him on his own bed. And he cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, thou hast brought calamity upon even the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son. Then he stretched himself out upon the child three times, and he cried, Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's soul come unto him again. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child became into him again, and revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from upon the upper chamber of the house, and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in your mouth is truth.
The reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. My soul shall rejoice in the Lord, for he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication is forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name which is the, which the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem. In the hand of your God you shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The reading is from Genesis. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. He said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with, his, with him and his son Isaac, and he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place which God had told him. On the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the places afar off. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the ass. Uh, I and the land will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son, and he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went, both of them together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them together. <clears throat> when they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Then Abraham put forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the land or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram, and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord has seen, as it, as it is said to this day, On the mount the Lord hath seen. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven, and, By myself I have sworn, said the Lord, because you have done this, and have not withheld your son, your only son. In, I will indeed bless you, and I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your descendants shall all the nations of the earth bless themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. The reading from the prophecy of Isaiah The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, 
to proclaim the liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Aliens shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall be your plowmen and vine dressers, but you shall be called the priest of the Lord. Men shall speak of you as the ministers of our God. You shall eat the wealth of the nations, and in their riches you shall glory. Instead of your shame, you shall have a double portion. Instead of dishonor, you shall rejoice in your lot. Therefore, in your land you shall possess a double portion. Yours shall be everlasting joy. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense. I will make them an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring in the midst of all the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed and they shall greatly rejoice in the Lord. The reading from the fourth book of Kings. One day, Elisha went on to Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small roof chamber with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp, so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. One day he came there, and he turned into the chamber and rested there. And he said to Gehazi, his husband, call the Shunammite. When he had called her, she stood before him, and he said to him, See now to her, see, you have taken all this trouble for us. What is to be done for you? Would you have a word spoken on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? Gehazi answered, Well, she has no son, and her husband is old. He said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway, and he said, At this season, when the time comes around, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my lord, O man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived, and she bore a son about that time, the following spring, as Elisha had said to her. When the child had grown, he went out one day to his father among the reapers, and he said to his father, Oh, my head, my head. The father said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. And when he had lifted him and brought him to his mother, the child sat on her lap till noon, and then he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, and shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Send me one of the servants and one of the asses, that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. And he said, Why will you go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, It will be well. Then she saddled the ass, and she said to her servant, Urge the beast on, do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi his servant, Look, yonder is the Shunammite. Run at once to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the mountain to the man of God, she caught hold of his feet. And Gehazi came to thrust her away. But the man of God said, Let her alone, for she is in bitter distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. Then she said, Did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? He said to Gehazi, 
gird up your loins and take my staff in your hand and go. If you meet anyone, do not salute him, and if anyone salutes you, do not reply, and lay my staff upon the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff upon the face of the child, but there was no sound or sign of life. Therefore he returned to meet him and told him, The child has not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, he saw the child lying dead on his bed. So he went in and shut the door upon the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he went up and lay upon the child, putting his mouth upon his mouth, his eyes upon his eyes, and his hand upon his hands. As he stretched himself upon him, the flesh of the child became warm. Then he got up again and walked once to and fro in the house and went up and stretched himself upon the him. The child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Then he summoned the Hatsi and said, Call this Shumanite. So he called her, and when she came to him, he said, Take up your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground. Then she took up her son and went out. The reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Where is he who brought up out of the sea the shepherd of his sheep? Where is he who put in the midst of them his Holy Spirit, who caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moses, who divided the water before them to make for himself an everlasting name, who led them through the depths, like a horse in the desert, they did not stumble. Like cattle that go down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. So thou did lead thy people to make for thyself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see, from thy holy and glorious habitation, where are thy zeal and thy might? The yearning of thy heart and thy compassion are withheld from me, for thou art our father. Though Abraham does not know us and Israel does not acknowledge us, Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer from of old is thy name. Lord, why did thou make us err from thy ways, and harden our hearts so that we fear thee not? Return for the sake of thy servants, the tribes of thy heritage. Thy holy people possess thy sanctuary a little while. Our adversaries have trodden it down. We have become like those over whom thou hast never ruled, like those who are not called by thy name. Oh, that thou would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at thy presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and fire causes water to boil, to make thy name known to thy adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at thy presence. When thou did terrible things which we look not for, thou came down the mountains quaked at thy presence. From of old no one has heard or is perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides thee, who works for those who wait for him. Thou meet him that joyfully work righteousness, those that remember thee in thy ways. The reading is from the prophecy of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Behold, the days are coming when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people." And no longer shall each man teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. The reading is from the prophecy of Daniel. In his 18th year, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its breadth 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to assemble the satraps, the perfects and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, 
and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the perfects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the province were assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald proclaimed aloud, you are commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all the people heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and mal maliciously accused the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image, and whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews among you who have appointed over the, the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no heed to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. When they brought these men before the king, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music to fall down and worship the image which I have made, well and good, but if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into, the, into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is in the heavens, able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hands, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was wont to be heated, and he ordered certain mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their mantles, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and they were cast into the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's order was strict and the furnace was very hot, the flame of the fire slew those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning, fiery furnace. And they walked about in the midst of the flame, singing hymns to God and blessing the Lord. Then Azariah stood and offered this prayer in the midst of the, the fire. He opened his mouth and said, Blessed art thou, O Lord God, God of our fathers, and worthy of praise. And thy name is glorified forever. For thou art just in all that thou hast done to us, and all thy works are true, and thy way, right, ways right, and all thy judgments are truth. Thou hast ex executed true judgments in all that thou hast brought upon us and upon Jerusalem, the holy city of our fathers. For in truth and justice thou hast brought all this upon us because of all of our sins. For we have sinfully and lawlessly departed from thee, and we have, si and have sinned in all things, and have not obeyed thy commandments. We have not observed them or done them, as thou hast commanded us that it might go well with us. So all that thou hast brought upon us, and all that thou hast done to us, thou hast done in true judgment. Thou hast given us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful rebels, and to an unjust king, the most wicked in the, all the world. And, and now we cannot escape, and now we cannot open our mouth. Shame and disgrace have befallen thy servants and worshippers. 
For thy name's sake, do not give us up utterly, and do not break thy covenant, and do not withhold thy mercy from us, for the sake of Abraham, thy beloved, and for the sake of Isaac, thy servant, and Israel, thy holy one, to whom thou didst promise the maker to make their descendants as many as the stars of the heaven, and as the sea on the shore of the sand on the shore of the sea. For we, O Lord, have become fewer than any nation, and we brought low this day in all the world because of our sins. And at this time there is no prince or prophet or leader, no burnt offering or sacrifice or oblation or incense, no place to make an offering before thee or to find mercy. Yet with a contrite heart and a humble spirit may we be accepted as though it were with burnt offerings, offering of ram and bulls, and with tens of thousands of fat lambs. Such may our sacrifice be in thy sight this day, and may we who follow thee Holy, follow thee, for there will be no shame for those who trust in thee. And now, with all our heart, we follow thee, we fear thee, and we seek and seek thy face. Do not put us to shame, but deal with us in thy forbearance and in thy abundant mercy. Deliver us in accordance with thy marvelous works, and give glory to thy name, O Lord. Let all who do harm to thy servants be put to shame. Let them be disregarded and deprived of all power and dominion and let their strength be broken. Let them know that thou art the Lord, the only God, glorious over the whole world. Now the king's servants who threw them in did not cease feeding the furnace fires with naphtha, pitch, tow, and brush, and the flames streamed out above the furnace 49 cubits, and it broke through and broke those, burned those of the Chaldeans whom it caught about in the furnace. But the angel of the Lord came down into the furnace to be with Azariah and his companions and drove the fiery flame out of the furnace and made the midst of the furnace like a moist whistling wind so that the fire did not touch them at all, hurt or trouble them. Then the three, as with one mouth, praised and glorified and blessed God in the furnace, saying, Blessed art thou, O Lord, God of our fathers, and to be praised and highly exalted forever. And blessed is thy glorious holy name, and to be highly praised and exalted forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holy glory, and to be extolled and highly glorified forever. Blessed art thou who sittest upon cherubim, and look upon, lookest upon the deeps, and to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed art thou upon the throne of thy kingdom, and to be exalted and highly exalted, extolled and highly exalted forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven and to be sung and glorified forever. Bless the Lord, all works of the Lord. Bless the Lord, you heavens. Bless the Lord, you angels of the Lord. Bless the Lord, all waters above the heaven. Bless the Lord, all powers. Bless the Lord, sun and moon. Bless the Lord, stars in heaven. Bless the Lord, all rain and dew. Bless the Lord, all winds. Bless the Lord, fire and heat. Bless the Lord, winter cold and summer heat. Bless the Lord, dews and snows. Bless the Lord, nights and days. Bless the Lord, light and darkness. Bless the Lord, ice and cold. Bless the Lord, frosts and snows. Bless the Lord, lightning and clouds. Let the earth bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, mountains and hills. Bless the Lord, all things that grow on the earth. Bless the Lord, you springs. Bless, bless the Lord, seas and rivers. Bless the Lord, you whales and all creatures that move in the waters. Bless the Lord, all birds of the air. Bless the Lord, all beasts and cattle. Bless the Lord, you sons of man. Bless the Lord, O Israel. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Bless the Lord, spirits and souls of the righteous. Bless the Lord, you who are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Lord, Ananias, Azariah, and Mishael. Bless the Lord, apostles, prophets, and martyrs of the Lord. We bless the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. We praise and bless and worship the Lord, singing and exalt him throughout all the ages. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages.
to his death, we were buried, therefore, with him, by baptism into the death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we had been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the sinful body might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For he who has died is free from sin, but if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. For we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. And to your spirit, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.
into the sepulchre, and behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow, and for fear of him the guards trembled and became dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Lo, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And they went to tell his disciples, Behold, Jesus met them, and said, Hail. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. And when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave great sum, a great sum of money to the soldiers and said, Tell people his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were sleeping. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will testify him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed, and this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. Amen. short words about about today, today's service, um, uh, what we're celebrating. Of course, we, we probably know, but um, maybe some of you don't know that this, this liturgy that we have today, it's, it's a vestral divine liturgy. If you haven't noticed, uh, there are many elements of an evening service. It begins as an evening service. Uh, uh, we didn't do it today, but generally Psalm 103, 104 is read. And there's this evening hymn, uh, Let My Prayer Rise in Thy Sight as Incense. And then there's the hymn, Gladsome Light. Uh, these are all elements of the evening service of the church. Um, and if you also know the, the liturgical day goes from sundown to sundown. So in the evening, our liturgical day begins the next day, essentially. So what I'm getting at is that this evening service, this liturgical, this uh, vestral divine liturgy, is actually a service in many ways for resurrection, for the next day. Um, there are elements of, in the hymnography, talking about, um, uh, well, it's all about resurrection. Um, some of the hymnography I wanted to point out was uh, there are eight, I think, Stakira, and four at the end, they, it's this uh, monologue, basically, about the tomb, the tomb speaking. It's interesting that we, we have different things speak, we have dialogue, we have monologue, and this is actually something, uh, the tomb speaking about Christ. And if you didn't catch it, uh, it's, it's, it's really interesting. There's actually four of them. Uh, it says, today, this is one of the four. Today, hell cries out groaning. My dominion has been shattered. I received a dead man as one of the dead, but against him I could not prevail. From eternity I had ruled the dead, but behold, he raises all. Because of him do I perish. 
Glory to thy cross and resurrection, O Lord. So all of the hymns that we were singing at the beginning of the service had something to do with the resurrection and something to do with uh, the tomb, because actually on Saturday Christ laid in the tomb. Friday he was crucified, Saturday he laid in the tomb, and there's all these references to the Sabbath. Christ kept the Sabbath holy, resting in the tomb, working on our salvation, so to speak. Um, so this Vesperal Divine Liturgy is actually the first proclamation, so to speak, of Christ's resurrection. We hear these hymns about Christ's resurrection from the dead, our salvation in his uh, new birth, and in, 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 our new birth in him. Uh, and speaking of new birth, historically, Saturday, this, this Vesperal Divine Liturgy was a day when we baptize new people into the faith. Uh, and this, of course, uh, we hear this the, the connection with this is specifically with the epistle reading that we read today, and also the gospel reading as well. It was a longer gospel reading than we normally have at a, vesicle, at a, at a baptismal service, but it's from the same uh, Matthew's gospel, and we end with this, uh, with this commission, great commission, to go out and spread, uh, spread the good news. So uh, there's a connection between initiation to the church, new life in Christ, uh, baptism, regeneration, resurrection, all these things have their, have their place in this Vesperal Divine Liturgy on this Saturday before we celebrate Sunday on this, the, the, the resurrection service. So this service today is kind of a, a go-between, so to speak. We're still Saturday, but it's already a proclamation of the resurrection, and we see this in the hymnography and in the readings of the church. And I didn't mention even the Old Testament readings. All these Old Testament readings are... Um, are the fulfillment of uh, Christ is the fulfillment of all of them. They prefigure Christ in 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 in, in all of them. We, we we read about the cross, you know, Exodus, you know, um, passage into new life, uh, Pascha. We read about uh, the three holy use in the, in the furnace, you know, this victory over death, dancing around and singing uh, when they should have been dead. Uh, um, you know, Jonah in the whale. All these things prefigure Christ. Uh, his three days in the tomb, his uh, three three day Pascha, death, tomb, and resurrection. Um, so it's 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 a foretaste of what we're actually going to participate tonight and tomorrow. And so th this proclamation of resurrection is already here present in this vesperal divine liturgy. So uh, I won't leave you with the words that we greet one another on on Pascha, but for the last time I will say, for the next forty days rather, Christ is in my midst. He's never shall be.
electric thou hast ordered all things for us. When thou didst create man by taking dust from the earth and didst honor him with thine own image, O God, thou didst set him in a paradise of delight, promising him eternal life, and the enjoyment of everlasting blessings in the observance of thy commandments. But when man disobeyed thee, the true God, who had created him, and was deceived by the guile of the serpent, becoming subject to Jezreel's own transgressions, thou, O God, in thy righteous judgment, didst send him forth from paradise into this world, returning him to the earthly form which he was taken, yet providing for him the salvation of regeneration in thy Christ himself. For thou didst not turn thyself away forever from thy creature whom thou hast made, O good one, nor didst thou forget the work of thy hands. Through the tender compassion of thy mercy thou didst visit him in various ways. Thou didst send prophets, thou didst perform mighty works by thy saints, when every generation were all pleasing to thee. Thou didst speak to us by the mouth of thy servants, the prophets, foretelling to us the salvation which was to come. Thou didst give us the law as a help. Thou didst appoint angels as guardians. And when the fullness of time had come, thou didst speak to us through thy Son himself, by whom thou didst also make the ages, who, being the radiance of thy glory and the image of thy person, upholding all things by the word of his power, thought it not robbery to be equal to thee, the God and Father. He was God before the ages, yet he appeared on earth and lived among men, becoming incarnate of the Holy Virgin. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being like into the body of our lowliness, that he might liken us to the image of his glory. For as by man sin into the world, and by sin death, so it pleased thine only begotten Son, who was, born, who was in the bosom of thee, the God and Father, who was born of a woman, the holy man, walked as never virgin Mary, who was born under the law to condemn sin in his flesh, so that those who were dead in Adam might be made alive in thy Christ himself. He lived in this world and gave us commandments of salvation, releasing us from the delusions of idolatry. He brought us to the knowledge of thee, the true God and Father, he obtained us for himself, chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, having cleansed us in water and sanctified us with the Holy Spirit. He gave himself as a ransom to death, in which we were held ca captive souls under sin, descending through the cross into hell, that he might fill all things with himself. He loosed the things of death. He arose on the third day, having made for all flesh a path to the resurrection from the dead, since it was not possible for the author of life to be a victim of corruption. So he became the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn of the dead, that he might be himself truly the first in all things. Ascending into heaven, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, and he will come to render every man according to his works, and as memorial for the saving passion, he has left us these things, which we have set forth according to his command. For when he was about to go forth to his momentary and ever memorable and life-giving death, in the night when he was, in which he was given up, or rather gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread in his holy and pure hands, and having shown it to thee, the God and Father, having given thanks, blessed and hallowed it, and broken it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sin. the fruit of the vine, and having mingled it, and given thanks, blessed it, and hallowed it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sin. Amen. Do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death, you confess my resurrection. Therefore, we also are master remembering his saving passion and life creating cross, his three day burial and resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven and sitting at the right hand of the God and Father, and his glorious and awesome second coming. Offering unto thee thine own of thy own, on behalf of all and for all.
because of thy mercy and compassion, which thou hast richly poured out on us, now we are to approach thy holy altar and present unto thee and to thy Son the holy body and blood of thy Christ. We pray thee and call upon thee, O holy of holies, that by the favor of thy goodness thy Holy Spirit may come upon us and upon these gifts now offered to bless them and to hallow and to show. This bread to be truly the precious body of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And this cup to be truly the precious blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Shed for the life of the world. Amen. Remember, O God, those who are in courts and minds and exiles in 
the weather. Send gentle showers upon the earth, so that it may bear fruit. And bless the crown of the year with thy goodness. Make the stations of the church to cease. Pacify the ragings of nations, and quickly destroy the uprisings of heresies. By the power of thy Holy Spirit, receive us all into thy kingdom, showing us to be sons of the light and sons of the day. Grant us thy peace in thy love, O Lord, our God, for thou hast given all things to us. And grant that with one mouth and one heart we may glorify and praise thine all honorable majestic name. Of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. And the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Having remembered all the saints, who again and again in peace let us pray to the Oh. 
benefit of sanctification and healing of our souls and bodies through the home and after of all. Grant that the communion of the holy body and blood of thy Christ may be, for, may be to us for our faith and a shame. A love of fame, the fulfilling of wisdom, the healing of soul and body, the repelling of every adversary, the observing of thy commandments and acceptable defense of thy brethren. At thy judgment seat of thy Christ, for the art of sanctification and to the increase of thy glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. our true God, through the prayers of his most dear mother, through the prayers of the holy apostles, <clears throat> especially Paul, through the prayers of, of our Father among the saints, Basil, Archbishop of Caesarea and Cappadocia, of the holy righteous answers of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all thy saints, have mercy upon us and save us, for he is a good God, and he loves mankind. Saturday. Tonight we will have in nocturnes at 11.30. If, if you don't know, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but tonight uh, it's going to be our normal, normal Paschal services this evening, and there are actually three services. So there's this ending of Saturday, the, a, late, a late sort of midnight service that we have in, in the liturgical cycle called nocturnes. Um, so that's what we have first, and after nocturnes is the procession although we're not going to process outside. Then after the procession, we come back in and we begin matins. And then after matins, we begin divine liturgy. So there's going to be three services tonight, uh, all beginning at 11.30. And afterwards, uh, we will have a basket blessing. And if you have baskets at home, and if you're still up, um, you're more than welcome to, along with me, sprinkle holy water on your basket. So I, don't, I think that's all the announcements. We do have um, a big Zoom coffee hour tomorrow at 3.30, if I remember properly. We also have Vespers at 2 p.m. from, from our home. But, uh, so that's what we have today. It's, it's, it's really weird being in an empty church. Uh, I hope that you're trying to make the best of it in your homes uh, with any resources that we've sent out to you many resources. Uh, look at your emails if you haven't looked. So, uh, hope you're making the best of it, reading, contemplating. Uh, so, may the Lord bless you and see you this evening.